Good evening, everyone. This is Dolores Cannon again with the Metaphysical Hour. And we are live tonight. Today is May the 10th, 2013. And I know we've been gone several weeks in a row, and you've been listening to the archives. But we're on the road a lot, so that happens. But this is our only night that will be live until the middle of June. So if anybody wants to call in, we'll be open to it. We're going to just talk about things. We never know for sure what we're going to talk about. But anybody wants to call in tonight is perfectly welcome. I'll give out the toll-free number, 1-888-627-6008, 888-627-6008. And Don just told us they've got a lot more call-in lines, and so they're welcome. They can handle a lot more calls now. So anybody that wants to call in. Okay, and Julia's here again. Hello, everyone. Uh, the man who works for us in England, you know, we have our office over there down in the Crop Circle country in Wilshire. And he, he came, it's been about two weeks ago, three weeks. Been, in a way, you, you don't know. <laughs> I've lost track of time. Believe me, I really have. It may be a month ago. Yes. But he came, Vitaly, he came over from England the first time in America. And so he's really was been enjoying himself. He just left to go back to England. Right. But he's been enjoying his first trip to America and seeing how crazy we all are over here <laughs> with the differences between England. Mm -hmm. So it was good for him to see all of this because we go over there a lot. So he just returned to the England office. Right. Okay, but I guess uh, we're going to begin by talking about some of the things we was doing during the time we were gone. Okay. Uh, I guess the first one, right after we uh, were on the air last, was our UFO conference that we did in Eureka Springs. And that ended up being absolutely fantastic. It was the first one that we ever, we did since I inherited it, 26 years. Well, there's a color already. Okay, and then we'll get back to that because I want to talk about what we learned at the UFO conference. Okay, somebody there? Yes, good evening. Go ahead. Uh, Dolores, I've been waiting to talk to you for a couple of years now. A um, couple of years? I okay. had a unique adventure uh, that was uh, a couple of years ago, a um, three-night adventure that left me with uh, some pretty strong vibrations. And uh, um, it would be, let's see, for about the last year, I've been experiencing those vibrations again, but uh, sometimes they get incredibly uh, powerful. Um, this has been, especially in the last two, three weeks. Uh, do you have anything that you could say to that? Oh, certainly. <laughs> well, when, can I ask a question? When you say vibrations, can you uh, just describe them a little bit more before we just jump on? Okay. Um, I have degenerative disease. And uh, um, normally uh, I experience chronic pain anyway, always had. Um, after, uh, it would be about February, uh, I think it was February a couple of years ago, I had a three-night um, uh, um, weird lucid dream, astral projection, whatever it was. Um, after the third night, I was left with vibrations for about three weeks which were 24-7, which um, vibrations meaning just, uh, yeah, um, inner vibrations, inner energy, whatever it was, it was pretty powerful. Your whole body so I went to my doctor and had some tests done. Um, we looked at neurological and um, problems that could be like pinch nerves and um, all the things that you'd think of, nerve encroachment, whatnot. Everything came back uh, negative. And... Uh, basically, the last thing that he said, and I know that uh, uh, he, he said that he'd never say he said this, but was that uh, there was some kind of frequency shift going on. Mm. He's an incredibly <laughs> open-minded doctor. Yeah, imagine that. <laughs> and we've been lecturing yeah. on this for, what, the last couple of years or more? Right. You were well, right well, this went 
back for about three weeks. Now, now one other thing that I was left with um, when I woke up after the third night was uh, my right eye was completely um, swollen shut, and it looked like there was an indentation of um, a triangular thing, whatever. Um, when I went to my doctor a week later, he had said that uh, it was probably a tear duct, and we didn't look into it any further. But I thought that that was weird because that's never happened in my life. But anyway, um, after this, I I actually uh, went online to try to find some information. I went to webmed.com and a couple other places. I made a brief post, and in this post, I actually um, was basically writing down what was happening to me. And I would go back to the post every day for uh, probably about a week. And then finally I found one guy in Australia that had the same thing happen to him, another one over in England. And I live in in Minnesota. Uh So uh, one of them actually uh, um, talked about Dolores Cannon and uh, um, that I should go listen to the videos. I listen to the videos. I have your books. Um, so I was learning, and I was learning more about uh, wanders and, and all these different things, uh, volunteers. And it, it's strange, because ever since that did happen, um, my dreams all, all have pyramids in them, and I have actually uh, <laughs> bought quite a few pyramids, maybe a little bit too much for um, um, my better half here. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, um, I also... Uh, uh, became a member and a moderator of the astropulse.com where I help people um, learn astro travel and everything all the time. So this has been an incredibly eye-opening um, adventure, and all roads were actually leading um, right into uh, being some kind of helper or whatnot. Just before um, this all occurred, I was getting down on myself because as I do have chronic pain and I'm um, a lot of times that makes you feel useless and stuff like, like that. Um, I guess somebody else has chronic pain knows what that's like. But, um, uh, yeah, kind of hitting a depression, whereas um, I had never, um, I always tried to help people out of depressions. So when I started getting it myself, this three night event was what actually took me back out of it. Okay, I'm interested to know what part of your body do you have the pain in? Oh, well, um, at first, it first started um, in the lower back. And um, um, like I said, I have degenerative disc disease, so I have a number of different uh, discs that are, in, that are bad or whatnot. So that was normal. And then it started getting uh, shaking in the hands and the top of the forehead and different things like that. And every time um, a new pain would come along, I would end up getting something to fix it. Um, I looked into a product called the Impertonic QGM, which works by uh, Qijong Energy. It's actually a a healing massager that massages right through instead of on top of the body kind of thing. And uh, um, I managed to quell that pain. And then my doctor had me on uh, uh, noratripoline and a couple other different pills for a while, to try to stave off, to keep you happy while you're having the pain. Let's put it that way. So um, the pain would come and go. It would be probably for a couple weeks straight, and then it would go away for about a month, come back again. Um, Just in the last three weeks when it actually came, it came as something that that, uh, the only way that I can handle it is with Percocet right now is a uh, vibration inside the spine, like like coming from your essence instead of uh, uh, instead of your nerves. Um, does, does that make any yeah, sense? I tell you, all this is very very familiar to us, and we've been lecturing on this for the last two years or more no about more. the vibrations, how they're increasing, and their frequencies yep. are changing. The vibrations are changing, and a lot of people are experiencing that feeling, the vibrations in their body as they adjust to it. Right. But uh, well, after this all did occur, and I actually um, um, went and watched her video, and I learned more. We made a, a uh, uh, or we tried to make an appointment with um, your office, and uh, timing didn't work. Um, uh, when we got your phone call back. We were actually on the road. We travel and do Renaissance fairs as uh, merchants. 
um, around the country, so we were on the road. And the message that I got when I returned was that uh, because I had missed the message, I missed my chance kind of thing. And, and I said, okay, well, I'm a firm believer. Everything happens for a reason, and there's a time yeah, and um, a time to share and time not to. And in between. We've been setting appointments in between our travels, so it, it makes it hard. Yeah, probably oh, was. Yeah. Well, well, you're incredibly busy all the time. Um, that's a good thing because you help so many people, and there's so many people that need to actually know this, too. Uh-huh. And that's why I uh, became the moderator of that uh, uh, forum or whatnot, so that I could help other people that were feeling the same way. And once in a while, you do get somebody that comes to it, that, that uh, comes to ask to travel and starts talking about uh, feeling like um, they volunteered to come here and not liking their life the way they are. I'm 49 years old. Unfortunately, I've been tainted by uh, um, a lot of the things that humanity does, which doesn't give me the best uh, um, outlook on them, let's say that. But uh, I'm, always, I'm always open to helping. Okay, well, let's let Julia fill you in here because she she was talking. But the physical stuff tells us a lot about you too. Right. You well, Thank and you. what what I'm okay. This was actually coming on before this event. The event just has just done. It it opened it up even more, and it it kind of ex, accentuated something that was already happening. Accelerated. Yeah. Well, more than accelerated, it actually just. Accentuate, accelerate would be speed up. It's not. It, it, it was more of a magnification of it. Okay. Um, which is why you. Okay. And if you could do me a favor and stop saying I have a degenerative disease or anything like okay. that, because the, you're claiming it when you do that. Um, oh. Okay. Yep. Okay. So because it's something that's just going on in your body, and so when you claim okay. it, you're creating it. Um, okay. Okay. You are one of these, again, I think we've talked about it before on this show, um, that when you came in, you you wanted to just, you, you're here as a channel, okay? You're a second wave. You're here as a channel. Energy. You, you came in to, to bring energy in, okay? So when you came in, mm-hmm. you said, okay, just give it to me. Bring it on. I'm, this is what I'm here for. And you're, it's coming in. In too strong. It's not, you know, it's not coming in quite right. It's more than what your body can handle. Hence, the symptoms you're having. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. And then when this event happened, it, uh, which was, which is fine. It's just you were already had more energy than the average person, and then this event accentuated it, and so there it just amplified. So there you have all this other stuff going on. Um, okay. So all what you need to do. Because it's one of those things, we've described it before, the energy that comes in is supposed to come in like a funnel into the top of your head. Right. Okay? Funnels in. Yours is coming in. Do you know those old Star Trek movies where Beam Me Up, Scotty, where the beam mm-hmm. comes around a person? Right. Right. Yours is yours is more like that, where it's around. See, it's, it's more than what you really, this is how it was before this event. Okay. okay? It was like that. Um, so we're going to go back to that point because right now it's like that and magnified and amplified and it's like really, really, you know, that's it's just really bright. Okay, it's just more than what you need at this point. So go back to the event. Go back to before the okay. event. If you can do this, go back to before the event and ask for it to be turned down. Okay. Just picture a dial and picture the energy being turned down. Okay. You'll know when it happens. Are you doing it now? Yep. Okay. Tell me when it happens. Um, I kind of saw like a, a, a blue light vortex or whatnot that was spinning uh, um, counterclockwise instead of clockwise. Normally okay. I see it when I do a lot of meditation or when I um, do my astral projection or whatnot. I always use that vortex to rise. So okay. uh, that's when it's going clockwise. This time I, you know, I see it turning it's counterclockwise. So whatever it's doing, it's doing it in reverse. Right. Okay. So tell me when, okay, so we're at the event, be, I mean, we're at the time before the event. Okay? Mm-hmm. We're going to get that energy level to, to what you can work with. 
I'm not going to say normal because you can handle more than normal, but we want to get okay. the one that you can work with, okay? Okay. All right. So well, now. I'll definitely work on that. Okay, what well do now you see as event, the obsession with the pyramids? Uh, that's just because it's awakening all your memories. See, this is just, you're just waking up to who you are and what you are. See, you came in okay. with this energy to generate this energy to the world. It's here to help the world as it moves oh, into that, this other what dimension. The, what, what are pyramids? Pyramids are amplifiers. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, see, you're, that may be the, the obsession with pyramids is um, that's what you are. <laughs> yeah, he's, so, he's the second wave are those yeah. who bring in the energy, they channel the energy. Right, and they amplify. And then maybe or maybe even the pyramids are helping you amplify. I don't know. There's, there is a tie in there, though, and it has to do with, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it's just you're using them or it's something you used to do, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. But the energy is very Well, I've important. read quite a bit uh, about the uh, Russian technology with the uh, golden section pyramid that, that uh, they have. And we have actually a replica in our home now because I had to end up uh, ordering one after I saw that one. That's uh, as strong as the obsession gets. But um, but you're here they've right They've managed now. to actually tap on to that energy, and it's a free energy. And the, the sad thing is uh, our own country doesn't even look at uh, pyramids as being something of uh, importance. Okay, let's, let's They have over 150... We have to move on, so let's keep our okay, focus so here. Okay, so don't don't get off on that. Don't make that part of your yep. world. You make what you okay. know about pyramids your world, okay? Right. And okay. you are here to bring this energy in. The pyramids are amplifying your energy. So now okay. you've regulated your pre-event energy. Now it's gone through the event, and now it will be regulated to a, a way, a level that you can help and do what you came here to do. Now, if it ever feels okay. like more than you can handle, just do that dial again. Just turn it down. This is totally just up to dial. you. You are totally in control. Just say it's more. It's too much. Yeah. I turn you it down. You just didn't know that until now, and that's why it's like it's been something happening to you. But you, what it is is you. They nobody. They can't turn it down until you ask. So now you've asked. Well, that makes me feel foolish because I'm. That's that's such an easy. Um, uh, <laughs> It's, it's always easy. To it. Yeah, it always is easy. easy. Um, and that's always we don't simple. See. It, you have to ask. They can't. Nothing can yeah. be done unless we ask. So, but it is that that simple. And so, work on that. Work with that. And um, I, I'm feeling okay. The, the energy's dropped into your heart area, which is wonderful. So that's what I want you to do. You just you just pull it out, push it out through your heart area to everyone around you. And that's how you work with everyone. That's how you will help everyone. Okay. Well, thank you very much, ladies. Uh, you, uh, thanks for calling uh, in. Well, made yeah. a big difference here tonight. Okay. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Thank okay, you. thanks for calling. Okay. And can there's another caller? Yes. Hello? Hi. Hi. Oh, what's your name? Hi, my name is Jesse. Um, so I, I've been an empath for most of my life and I, I've been awake most of my life as well. And I most recently in the last six years started, uh, eating a lot better and I'm really healthy now, but as I've gotten healthier, I've got more empathetic, more, become more of an empath and, uh, I'm to the point where I just can't be around any people, and I just kind of want to retreat into nature. Um, uh -huh. And and uh, I've got just this diarrhea that won't go away for, like, over a year now. <laughs> okay, how old are you? I'm 34. Sec another second wave. We just had one, and now another second wave. Uh -huh. Because that's what you're doing. Um let me see what he was with the first part with the best empath, and now he's eating better. Yeah. And so, yeah, you're opening but up see, more because you're see because you know. empaths take on everybody else's emotions, everybody else's physical feelings. It's never good to be an empath because you take on too much. It's you can be sympathetic but not empathetic. So the best thing to do is just realize that's not mine. That's theirs. Right, you know how to do that, right? How to recognize your energy and someone else's energy? 
Right, and I, I turn on my purple bubble and, you know, acknowledge my energy field, and sometimes that just doesn't do it, you know, so. Yeah, and that's, that's part of rather than, I mean, it's just recognizing this isn't mine, this isn't mine, send it back to where it came from, and then that lets it go back. Sometimes I'll even put mirrors around myself before, whenever I, before I realize that it's really easy to just deflect it back. But that's what mirrors do. They they just send it back to where it came from. It's unneeded energy yeah. for you, mm-hmm. so you just send it back to the sender because they don't even know half the time that they're sending it right. out. Right, and then as you do that, it kind of starts doing it perpetually. It's just like you said, your purple bubble. It just you know it just stays there and does it. Now the reason it's increasing is because yeah, you you're cleaning up your your system, and so that cleans up. <laughs> you know, it allows those the uh, the frequencies to flow better. And so, yeah, you probably are opening up to be even more of a pure, you know, you're just taking on everything. So just realize that. Don't let it, I mean, that's the hard, that's the difficult part is realizing um, it can be depressing sometimes when you take all that on, and especially if you don't know where it's coming from. But you've done this long enough that you can, you, you know it's not yours, and just, just send it back. It's perfectly okay. You don't have to take it. You go where it's supposed to go. Mm-hmm. But this so is I just basically, and I just mostly need to have the intention of not taking it on more than I already am. Absolutely, it's just it's not mine. It's not mine, and sometimes people say, "Well, who does it belong to?" Um, if you don't, if it's not, if it's you're just one that picks up everybody's, and it probably doesn't matter to you who it belongs to. Just say it's not mine and send it back to the sender. Right. I just send it back to the sender. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Great. Well, thank you very much. Okay, and, and good luck to you. Yeah, and otherwise, that, that's fantastic, much. because and that's a great message for everybody else. So you, you clean up the diet, you get all these toxins and these chemicals out, this is what happens. We open up more and more. And that's <laughs> what's causing so. the diarrhea, too. Right. We're it's getting just, Yeah, well, he's also trying to get rid of these energies. <laughs> that's, yeah, the, yeah. that's the diarrhea. <laughs> so, it's like, let, get out of here. <laughs> Okay, there's a lot going on with energy right now. Absolutely. Okay, well, thank you right. for calling. Dolores, love your work. He said, thank you, Dolores, I love your work. Okay, thank you. Okay, I guess that's all right now. We may have some more coming in. Right. But, yeah, we are finding more and more with these energies, especially since uh, December the 21st. Oh, it, it's been the last, yeah, since then, December 21st, there was a shift. Things really did shift, and um, it was palpable. I mean, you could really feel it. It not necessarily right then, but in the days afterwards, you could mm-hmm. tell something was different. And it wasn't wishful thinking or anything like that. It was there's really something different, and it's something you like. I said before, you have to look at with different eyes, listen to with different ears, feel with different sensors. It's just something you. It's kind of like reading between the lines, kind of thing. You you don't look at the day to day world on TV. Although you can see it if you know what you're looking for. You can see it on the day-to-day world on TV and the day-to-day world that's just around. But you have to know what to look for. So, But even since then, I would say the last couple of months, it's just really done a major shift. So. A lot of places we go now, people are picking up on it. And many of them don't know anything about the 2012 thing about right. that we're supposed mm-hmm. to be. But they all said they feel different. They know something is going on, even mm-hmm. if they can't put their finger on it. So it's definitely happening. And I get lots of clients now, and it has to do with energy right. and the increase of the energy. And they don't know what to do with it, and it's affecting different parts of their body. So the, everybody out there needs to realize this, that your body is adapting to this new energy, mm-hmm. and it's a good energy. It's a positive energy. It won't hurt you. You just have to adjust to it. You just flow with it. Like they were always telling me before, just put your roller skates on and roll. You know, the, you, it's nothing. I, I think our, some people, it's our tendency to just, it, it, oh, here's, here's the analogy that I used to give. And then uh, It's like a surfer. You're surfing in the ocean, and if what happens if you were to decide you know, if you've got a wave coming up behind you or something, and you decide, no, I'm just going to stand here, mm-hmm. it's going to bowl you over, and it's going to probably toss you around and, and cause some damage. But if you'll get on the surfboard and ride it, you're fine. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's where you have to just, or even just your body, you can get on top of the wave and ride it, you know. But uh, 
you just don't resist it. If you just think, oh, I'm going to stop right here and stand in front of it, no, it, it'll knock you over and probably hurt you. <laughs> that makes sense because you're resisting the changes that are happening. And the changes are perfectly normal. It just that it has never happened before in the history of the universe. Mm-hmm. Right. So we're feeling it more because it's never happened to a human body. Right. And we have been told, though, some, some people can't handle it and they just leave the planet. Right. They can't adjust mm-hmm. to it. But the majority of them are made to to go with the flow and we can handle it. Oh, we're all made. It's a choice. You know, and, yeah. and it's just if you want to, I'd say the ones that choose to go are just ones that don't want to flow and they just want to resist or they want to help from the other side. You know, they're just, it's not compatible, it's something. Yeah, there's so, nothing mm-hmm. wrong with it, but no. realize if you're experiencing these energies, it's it's natural for now. It's the new normal, I guess you would say. Which is changing by the second. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay, we got another caller. Hello. Hi, how are you? Fine. What's your name? Uh, this is Jennifer. Okay. I'm Jennifer. the first waiver. Okay. Uh-huh. I had a couple questions. Okay. The first one, the first one is uh, we're hearing through channeling that there's only about 60% of people have actually awakened and that nothing can really happen. We can't make that final jump until, like, that we get at least about 90%. Do you know anything about oh, that? Oh, I haven't heard that, no. no. I haven't heard it either. In fact, I heard it didn't take a very large percentage at all to, to make a difference. To make a difference. So, in fact, I really this was ago when they were trying to get things moving, I think they said it was only like 10 or 20% was what was needed to make it happen. So, the fact if they think we have 60%, wow, that's, that's fantastic. That's, <laughs> um, no, it's what they talk about the 100th monkey syndrome. And the, you have to get the critical mass, and right. the critical uh-huh. mass is not as big as you think it is because it right. can influence a lot. And what was it? We were at an event in, in February, uh, about the 23rd of February, and was, that was when Dee got the message that three weeks earlier we had re, we had achieved the hundredth monkey. The, so, the critical mass. Yes, the yeah, critical we, mass. we were given the seminar in out in Sacramento. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, uh-huh. we've never heard it being that much because you're not going to get 90%. No. I don't no, see how I you can No, I can't imagine that. that. There are very few people I even know who even have a clue out there. <laughs> you're probably honest. in a city, aren't you? I'm sorry? Are you in a city? I'm in, no, I'm not in a city. I, I'm in a. I'm on the outskirts of a city. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, but, um, well, I mean, the crowd we run around, and we're, we're in the metaphysical world, so every, you know we see we see the sixty percent. But um, yeah. yeah, if you're in the in the you know, and our and the work is totally in that, so we see it. Um, but yeah, if you're in the day to day work world, you it, it probably isn't as easy to see. Like I said, you have to look with different eyes, and not everybody is going to display that they're doing it if in the average everyday world. Well, they, the ones we work with, called the other average person the sleepwalkers. And they said the sleepwalkers have got to wake up. But, no, there are already a critical mass of people. Well, when you're saying, well, they said 60%, that that would be critical mass. Yeah. I don't, I, it's, that's over 50%. So. I don't know how they get that number, though. I don't either. Because well, nobody it's knows. Just came through. That's, you know, I don't know how accurate it is, but that's just exactly coming yeah. out. Yeah. Well, we yeah. see more because we travel so much and, and our lectures and classes are done with metaphysical people. Right. Even when we were in Istanbul, uh, there are people who are into these things. So that's why we are surrounded by people exactly. who understand it and right. are already yeah. moving. So we with. see 95%, but, <laughs> but 95% of the people we see are... <laughs> but that's not your average no. Joe Blow on the street. Exactly. You know? Not at all. That must so, be uh, we don't see the... Too. The complete cross section. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You said you had some other questions? Oh, I had one other question, and it has to do with, <clears throat> um, because I'm on a plant-based diet as well as the other guy that called, um, and so I take no medications whatsoever because I'm very healthy, but the one thing that I that none of us are able to get off is our thyroid hormone. And I know that that's very, very important, and that was something that 
I think Dolores said in her books that you have to, you know, keep on your thyroid and make sure you have enough thyroid hormone. And I'm no, I've well, never, that... ever, ever said that. No, because you they don't like medication at all. They said all drugs have a side effect. It's been the opposite to get off of drugs, and they're always telling everybody stop it. But uh, do you know if you read my books? Do you know what the thyroid means? Yes, I know everything. I'm a thyroid expert. No, 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 not no, not, uh, oh, not medically, not yeah. medically. Not, I not mean, that way. What does it What does it mean when you have something wrong with your thyroid? Metaphysically. Oh, um, uh, that we're holding back. We're not saying what we should be saying. Or exactly, you're that. not speaking your truth. There's something you need to say. You really want to say, and you can't say it or you won't say it. Afraid to say it. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But I've had as many as four cases in one week, all with hypothyroidism. And it's always the same right. thing. There's something that they're holding back on it and not, not wanting to speak about. Well, like you're talking about the metaphysical stuff, maybe you're afraid to talk to people because you're afraid of ridicule. Them thinking you're different. Oh, God, I've been different since I was born. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, that's not it. <laughs> uh, well, there's something, because that's what that represents. There's something you're not saying. You're not speaking out. Maybe it's some, somebody in your family or something you're not talking back to. Mm-hmm. Who knows? So so anyway, we're, once you what, clear that so channel. Are all the people that had hyperthyroidism, were they cured uh, by after talk, talking to you? Were they were they cured after having a definitely, session? Definitely, definitely. It's not just talking to her. They have a session, and then the higher self comes in and um, explains, explains what's going on. And if that once they understand it, and once they take the action, I mean, if they do whatever it is that they're supposed to be doing, then and then the healing is done right then. So, so uh-huh. all of those people were able to come off the thyroid hormone. Oh yeah, because you're not supposed to be on that. That is. Uh, your body should be making the thyroid hormone, not artificial. Okay. And uh, the doctors will put you on the medication, but really your body can do it itself because you're the one that's creating the problem. Everybody mm-hmm. is, and people always say, what do you mean I don't want to be sick? But if your mind's that powerful enough to create something like that, it's powerful enough to remove it once you feel it. Yeah, to heal it and remove it. I mean, it's a block mm-hmm. of the energy there. And so, you well, know. I wonder about this because we have an epidemic proportions of hypothyroidism in the United States just alone. And we have so, an epidemic of so people, many people not people are not the able to get off the hormone. Mm-hmm. You have no idea how many I see even in a couple of months with the same problem. Mm-hmm. And the doctors either put them on it or they want to put it on or they want to remove the thyroid. Right. Or, now see, some of it is a belief system. We have all these drug commercials on that say, you have this, you better take this, you know. And, and we, we are taught, just so we have a whole lot of different ways that we are coming about these, these illnesses, these diseases, you know. And so we're told mm-hmm. you have something wrong with your thyroid. That's one of the ways. The other way is we don't speak out. We don't speak for ourselves. You know, so there's some. There's a lot of different ways, but it has to do with speaking. And you're, are we blocking that energy there? Blocking you remember that's the chakra. If you know your chakras, it's the fifth chakra. Yeah, mm-hmm. that is the main, one of the main yeah. chakras, mm-hmm. and the it has chakra. to uh, has to do with speaking. Yeah, yeah. If you know your chakra system. Okay. All right. Well, thanks so much. You're welcome. Well, Thank I'm, you. But I'm not encouraging you to stop it. But think about it. Yeah. And I well, think you'll be able to decrease it. Yeah, work from that angle of what you need, what your body's trying to tell you. What well, it's saying, you know, there's something to you've got to be you're, you're it's just, saying. I so come from that angle, completely. and you will see as you start taking the action that it will it will heal itself. It will fix it. Because you've stopped the problem. Right. Okay, well, good luck to you. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Boy, we have so much of that, and that's amazing. Well, like you said, it's epidemic in America. Well, um, you know, that's probably a state of our of the nation kind of mm-hmm. thing. We're we're a nation. I mean, back a few years ago, we did start speaking up, 
and then maybe we've kind of gotten complacent again. But, yeah. um, you know, for so long we did stop things. Like, what's the point? What's the use? And maybe we're kind of, you know. Well, I know a lot of people in the psychic community, when they first get it, you know, awaken and they have all these abilities and they're afraid to tell anyone, they're afraid to be made fun of or criticized or looked down on, might lose their job, so they right. hold back. Right. That's one thing. Right. Then a lot of times, too, you're afraid to talk back to your spouse, parent. Someone, authority, someone, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. boss or whatever it is. But you got to look at that. Look at the reasons. That's why Julia wrote her book, has all of these symptoms in there. Right, and it's all about how your body speaks to you, how your higher self speaks to you through your body. So, mm-hmm. and, and these are all just points, and they, they do. They line up right up at the chakra points, most of these things do, and... Uh, and the throat is a major one, mm-hmm. like you said. That's the major chakra. But it's it seems strange. People think they're the only ones out there, and, and I see it continually. Well, no, she said a lot of people have this, and yeah. that's true. They but, do. I mean, the average mm-hmm. person, when I get them, right. they come in for a session, mm-hmm. and it, mm-hmm. they don't realize going to club. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> okay, we got another caller. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Hi, and my name is Bessie, and I'm I'm from Nashville. Hi, Betsy. And I had a question. How are you? Um, big fan of Dolores. And um, I had a question. Uh, I read in one of your books, Dolores, that uh, not everyone can go into that deep, uh, the deeper part when you do the past life regressions where I forget what you call it. The name you listening. weren't able to. Yeah, that's it. Mm-hmm. But, so I always had concern that I wouldn't be able to to do a past life regression because I couldn't go deep enough. Well, does that make sense? Well, in my method, we have found ninety percent will go if they follow. See, that's <laughs> what I'm teaching my classes for to show it. And this okay. is way way beyond the average uh, normal uh, odds because the other hypnosis methods say you can't be done. They say twenty percent. Yeah. But, no, I found 90% with my method will go into the deep level, and that's where we get all of the uh, help. The ones, okay. the other 10%, that's just what I teach in my class, I call them the left-brainers, the ones mm-hmm. who are too analytical, too controlling. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're mm-hmm. the ones, the only ones that would have problems going into it. Besides, okay. you're going to, you can go yeah. under. I mean, there's no Problem yeah, with that. Th- those people, even though they may not be somnambulistic, they still go under enough to get help and to get things. Wow. So it's not a matter of being hypnotized or not, because everybody can be hypnotized. Yeah, I mean, there's no problem there. Everybody can. It's not no big deal. People think right. of it like as something strange and weird, right. but all we do is take a normal state of your body and use it. It's the state of your mind that's there all the time. So you could be hypnotized, yes. You could have a past well, life. Well, that's good to Right, yeah. because I know uh, I searched on your website for uh, one of your trained uh, people here and locally, and I was able to find someone. So then I'll, I think I'll make an appointment with him. And then one other question. I noticed one of your other callers mentioned something about not um, wanting to be around people. And it just <laughs> yeah, resonated little- with me. I mean, I've um, been that way. Well, second most of my wave. Life. I meant to say, not the second wave. That's what they feel. Okay, because I felt that way most of my life and just figured I was just weird. And it's getting worse. <laughs> Join the club. That second wave. Because how I'm old are you? Four years old. Fifty-four. And, and I've always felt like I was a little different than everybody else. And people drain my energy. I was told that I was intuitive empath and. And and so I just feel people just draining my energy constantly. Well, they told me that, uh, see, everybody out there, the average person, many of them need energy. And they don't do it on purpose. But when they're in crowds of people especially, they are draining energy from anywhere they can get it. And if you have somebody like you who is, has a high energy, a good energy, mm-hmm a pure energy, that's the first one they're going to try to drain it from. And they don't right, do it on purpose because they don't, they, they don't know they're doing it. It's not on purpose. It's just they will pull it from anywhere they can. 
And, of course, it drains you. That's where you have to learn to put your shields up when you go into public and people. Or like that first okay. man, you know, he was, um, know when it's not yours. Know what, you know, like you said, you feel yourself being drained, so then there you can put up a shield, put up a mirror, put up something that, that deflects it off of you. Mm-hmm. Okay. you ever tried any kind of uh, exercise like that? Well, I have been doing that lately. Um when I go into my uh, workplace, it, it's very draining there. And yeah. so I've gotten to where there's a little prayer that I say and I uh, something about, you know, putting up mirrors and deflecting it, the negative yeah. energy back to source, and, and that seems to be helping. Yeah. It's not necessarily negative energies. It's just energy. Yeah, that's not compatible oh. with you. Yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's something you'd, I always say, okay, unneeded then. energy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But okay. yeah, I put a I put a shield up to keep being anybody from drawing on my energy when I go out mm-hmm. in crowds, and then the mirror up too to reflect any unneeded energy back to the sender. Okay. Okay. But believe okay. me, it's perfectly normal. Uh, you have a high energy, and it's a good energy. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, wonderful. Well, you guys are just very lovely, and I really appreciate you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much. Okay, okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. It's funny, we're getting a lot of that, but yeah, that's what they told me was any time that they said, I have a high energy. Mm-hmm. And the people are attracted to anybody that has that, mm-hmm. even though they don't know it, and they will right. draw. Right. So they said any time I go into a crowd or in a store or anything to put up a shield to keep people from drawing on it. Because every some people need it, right. they don't. And you know that first man was saying he put the, he put the purple bubble around him might explain what they told you, but might even help better than the purple bubble. Be the the pyramid that goes. Oh pyramid. yeah, mm-hmm. uh, they always told us, and I use it in my sessions, is to use a white pyramid of light, and to put that around you. And I, you can put it around your car, where your car is enclosed, even on the underneath mm-hmm. side, and you'll never have any flat tires or anything. It's wonderful. Or if you do have a flat tire, it will happen right next to a place that you can get help. <laughs> so it's always, you always know, You're always, always protected mm-hmm. with it. But that's that's one way. We put it around the planes when we're flying, mm-hmm. and it's really good to help with the turbulence. Right. But this is what they told me anyway to use that method. Uh it's, I don't want to say protection because there's nothing to be protected from, but it's just to to keep a lot of this stuff like you're away. Saying, yeah, just it, it's a, it's like a shield. It's like a we could call it a deflector. Maybe it's the white pyramid deflector. <laughs> That'd be a good so. way to put it. But um, these things are normal. But um, I think more it's, this goes along with what's happening right now too. The shifting in the energy Absolutely. is that people are becoming more aware of the energy. Mm-hmm. So they know when they're feeling it. Yeah, or before, we didn't even know what energy felt like. <laughs> so mm-hmm. now, and that's what I'm saying, when when an energy worker, like when I first started, and they activated my hand, so I even knew what it felt like. And it was like, well, this is something that's there all the time. but And you don't even notice it. But then once you're trained to, to feel energy, then you feel it in everything. You know, you start feeling it. So then you become more sensitive to it. And that's all it is. It's not anything really horrible major. It's just or you are now nothing, more sensitive. It's not <laughs> so, nothing attacking you. It's no, always been there. It's always been there. You just now feel it. You feel, you're able to sense it. So. But energy is increasing, mm-hmm. and that's why the sensitive people especially have to be aware of that to try to deflect it so it won't upset them. Right. But like that first man, I can understand that if he's feeling the vibration, it is scary. Right. But, yeah, every time they go to the doctors, the doctors don't know what it is. They're not thinking right. metaphysically at all. No, but that one said there was something about a frequency change, so that was cool. I think the doctors might be waking up, too. They're probably seeing things that they can't explain. <laughs> and they're not allowed to talk about it mm-hmm. because it's not in the book. Right. Not what they're trained. But they can't help but they can't deny it much longer because they must be seeing lots of people with the same problem. Well, it was about a year ago, I think it was, when they, they told me there will be a point that we can no longer deny. That we'll see things, we'll just there'll be things happening on so many levels 
that we will not be able to deny it any longer. So I'm sure it's for everyone. <laughs> and it's so. getting there to where, how are they going to explain it? Right. Not when you have so many people with the same things. Right. Okay. Uh, but I did want to talk a little bit about the um, UFO conference because, to me, the high point was Jaime Marfant. We brought him from Mexico, and he is uh, runs the 60 Minutes show mm-hmm. down in Mexico, right. the TV show. And he's one of the highest respected UFO investigators in Mexico. And he brought wonderful videos and films to show us. And he was over two hours explaining mm-hmm. all this. But beautiful pictures. But one thing I thought was fascinating, you remember several months ago, or was it the end of last year, when they had that piece of that meteorite hit that a village, that town in, in Russia. Russia? Right. It caused a lot of damage. Right. Well, what he he had actual films they had made where um, they saw a UFO. There was a meteorite coming, and it was much bigger. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's right. And that the, they saw a UFO uh, shoot at that meteorite and broke it up into pieces. And it was one piece that fell on the village. And it caused a lot of damage. He said, imagine what would have happened if the whole meteorite would have hit. Right. The rest of the pieces went into the ocean. Right. So it actually showed, and he showed it several times, of the UFO shooting at the meteorite and breaking it up in pieces. Right. Sounds like the science fiction movies, but hey. they were ahead of us. Very much so, yes. They were able to break it up and, and really save a lot of people. Right. Okay, we got another caller. Hello. Hi, Dolores. Yeah, who is this? My name is Donna. Hi, Donna. Well, thank you so much for taking my call. It's really a pleasure to meet you. I I almost feel I can't even believe I'm talking to you (laughs) because I just discovered your videos on the Internet and... Um, it was really, it's very, it feels very surreal to be speaking with you. Um, so I thought I'd try to call in. I didn't even think I would, uh, get to speak to you, but here I am. <laughs> um, and I've been feeling, you know, I'm feeling lots of energy and I'm always trying to, you know, live my positive life and, um, uh, definitely, I just, you know what, I didn't really have a particular question. I did want to ask you something that I've been, uh, looking at. I wondered if maybe, uh, you had any information about this comet, Ison. I heard you just talking about something, but I keep, uh, something keeps drawing me to research about it and all of the, the solar things that have been going on. So I, I just try not to get worried about anything, but I'm a little bit confused. <laughs> So I just thought I'd call in and see where the conversation was going to go. Okay, comet, what was it? This uh, comet Ison, is that what you said? Yeah, I've been reading um, or researching about this comet Ison that's supposed to be coming uh, next year. I've never heard and of it, but I, I just, tell you, every year oh. they got another comet that's coming, yeah, and pe- yeah. people get oh, all okay. shook up about it, and it doesn't do anything. You know, uh, okay, and, all right. So maybe I shouldn't worry about. I, I didn't want to. You know, I'm not trying not to worry. worry. <laughs> uh, you don't want to put that oh. energy into your vibration anyway. You don't want to put worry energy in you. Um, something, and I feel like I need to. Um, they're reminding me, and uh, something I need to say. It was something that came up on a session that we were reviewing for the class, uh-huh. and it was really interesting. Uh, in this session. Uh, the client, I guess, had a lot of, she was worried about all these things, you know, out there, chemtrails, environmental uh, things going on, chemicals in the food, and all these things. All the and, negative things. Right, and the subconscious came through and said, um, she she doesn't need to worry about these things. Uh, her frequency, mm-hmm. they aren't in her frequency. And then they came and they said, all of you, all of you light workers, all of you in this frequency do not have to worry about any of these things. It is not happening in your frequency. Well, see, there's another indication mm-hmm. of the shift of the world. There's pulling like, the two apart. Right, we're pulling apart. the two apart. And so if you want to be in the world where all that stuff is, then go ahead and be fearful and worry and that, you know, get emotionally involved in it. But when your mm-hmm. frequency is, when you're vibrating... And there we have the vibrating again. 
you're vibrating and your frequency is at a level that those are not, see, it can't happen in your world. You're vibrating mm. to at a higher frequency. Right. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, maybe even I was curious whether that would, like, affect or enhance. I, I'm just all, this is all new information I've been discovering, uh-huh. so I feel like I'm oh, a little overwhelmed, to be honest, but um, oh, I find... Um, and this is actually, this is a new way of thinking, and it's something you have to do mm-hmm. some loops, loops with your brain to do it, because you'll... Mm-hmm. You'll do this back and forth going, yeah, but 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 on TV it says this, and on the radio it says this, and the newspaper it says this, and these people say this, and that, you know, this is a reality because everybody says so. And you have to, it, it really is that you take charge of your thoughts. And you're saying, and it has to be, it's not in my world. And I kept thinking, oh, I'm ridiculous. But that's what they kept telling me to say. It's not in my world. Not in and my it's, world. It's really not. And that's what this was saying in this session is, Frequentially, it isn't in your world if you are if you stay vibrating at this other frequency, mm-hmm. and and that takes not being bogged down with fear and worry and all that stuff. But look look at what was going on December the twenty first. That was five years or longer oh, yeah. that everybody was dreading that date. They were building up Dared to that up. date that uh-huh. something terrible was going to happen. And as as soon as it's over and nothing happens, we get more dates. They were throwing out one in May. I think people just, they they love catastrophes. They love to be scared. They love to be the drama. It's the the drama. drama. They love the drama. (laughs) So I think it's just that. That's a human thing. Because, you know, when I've got people emailing and and on the shows talking about these, oh, but I heard this, now it's been changed. It's going to happen on this date. I say, give it a rest, people. We just yeah. came through that and nothing happened. Yeah. Let's give it a rest. Yeah. Nothing is going to Oh, happen. yeah, for sure. So, And I feel like what I'd like to, you know, I'd like to make all these plans in my mind and keep moving forward then. So you think that that's, like, the best way to just continue? I try to encourage other people, too. Don't worry. Everything is amazing right now. Everything, like, Absolutely. the energy of everything. You know, don't even buy into these people that are trying to scare you with, you know, uh, like pollution, like that's going to take over the world, right? Because I think the world is more powerful. And because we have, a, but but look at all the comments that come true about every year. They talk about a common true and coming true. You're doing good to see mm-hmm. it in the sky, and that's about it. Mm-hmm. None of them have ever caused any problems. I I, I say yeah. So I don't even okay. don't even sit there. Just live your life on the high. I mean. Just, yeah, everything is great. You walk every step knowing that in my world, I, I am creating everything in my world. I'm safe. Yeah. Because that is what you are doing. And so if you want to focus on these other things, and then you're going to create it in your world. So just know that you are creating every minute the way you want it to be. Mm-hmm. But I don't mm-hmm. think it hurts oh, think- to read about it and become interested in it. Like they had a wonderful eclipse last night in Australia. Mm-hmm. Those things are interesting. Yes, I heard about that. But don't buy into the fear thing. That's yeah, the thing. Yeah, yeah that we're going to get hurt by anything. So we're not ever even going to get hurt, right? We're just, we are, we have all this love around us, and we're going to have amazing lives, right? <laughs> right, absolutely. Yeah, if they go to fear, then that's where you have to put your little discernment atten- antennas up and go, uh-uh, not in my world. <laughs> so, uh-huh. Of course, okay. of course. Well, I appreciate it. I'm so happy. I can't even believe that I, you know, I feel so grateful I got to speak with you people. It's a, it's really nice to meet you. And um, maybe I'll even meet you one day, Dolores. And it's Julie, Julia? Yes, uh-huh. You never know. We're in a lot of places. We meet yeah. you in the world one day. <laughs> well, okay. come be sure and say hi if we do run across each other, so. <laughs> okay, and thank you. <laughs> Okay, take care. All the best. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. So this has been wonderful. We've had all these colors, and now it's coming to time yeah. to sign off. I think that's the fastest hour we've ever done. <laughs> yeah, because there had so many colors, and I had mm-hmm. I was thinking, what are we going to talk about? Yeah. But uh, we'll cover some of the other things later. But, uh, well, we do want to mention we do have another conference coming up in July. This is our eighth year for the Transformation Conference. Right. And that's July the 19th to the 21st here in Springdale, Arkansas. And if you look on our website, we've got a lot of wonderful speakers that are coming. 
Uh, it was about a month or more ago, I was on George Nuri's show, The Coast to Coast. And, uh, you know, after it was over, you know, he, he's a fantastic, has a fantastic show. After it was over, the producer asked if he could speak at our conference. And I said, that's a great honor that he wants to come and speak at ours. So he is going to be one of our keynotes right. at the one in July, July 19th to the 21st. George Nury will be here in Springdale, Arkansas. And he's mostly coming to answer everybody's questions. Right. He said on the air, he never gets a chance to. So that's what he's going to do. And the other keynote is William Henry, who is a fantastic speaker. Right. So if you look on our website, OzarkMountain.com, OzarkMT.com, mm-hmm. you will have all of the things we're going to be doing. And we're going to leave this next week. We're going to be in England for the only class I'm going to do in Europe this year. is going to be at Farringdon mm-hmm. in England, just outside. We're going that to give a, class is filling up fast. So. And we're going to be doing a, a talk in London right, right. before it. Mm-hmm. But all of the details from my uh, schedule are on our website. Okay, so that means we won't be back on the air until the middle of June when we get back from these trips. So in the meantime, listen to the archives. And everybody be safe and enjoy the summer. Oh, summer already? Okay. (laughs) Well, I don't know where May we came to. Make it great, everyone. (laughs) Okay. Good night, everybody. If you enjoyed the show, check out more of our other videos and be sure to subscribe and click the like button. Thank you for listening to the Metaphysical Hour with Dolores Cannon.